What's up viewers? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I posted anything bike related. Therefore today that will change. A while back I posted a video on this bike. I got a lot of positive reactions from it and even people building the actual bike. Look at this one for example. Absolutely amazing. There were also a couple of requests for me to make it electric. Immense demand, loads of comments. We will have to give the people what they want and make it electric. Let's get to it. Let's get started by opening the secret door in our facilities. So we came up with a plan and that is to use these absolute units of batteries to power the thing. But then something very special happened. And that something is called Switch. They gave me these two packages and let's check out what's inside them. Inside the box there was this amazing kit by Switch, the sponsor of this video. They make e-bike conversion kits. Normally, I'm quite skeptical about that, so let's see if they can provide what I am looking for in a conversion kit. We started off by adding a tire to the wheel they provided and give that some air. And yes, we do that on top of our workbench. Next up, it was time to grab the old frame. There it is. Let's trip it and... Uh make it cooler. Next up, me and this random dude got everything off the bike. Hmm, I know that guy. Baby, you give me ice. We cleaned it with our long dissolver. <laughs> You're giving me wind and rain. Let's whack some paint on this frame because it needs to look different this time. Looks amazing, time for the assembly. We'll come back later to give all the parts a clean and paint some of the undetailed parts black. I saw a lot of comments saying that my welds are ridiculous and I fully agree. Since building this bike though, I have learned to weld better. But since this bike has not fallen apart yet, I'll just continue to use it. Time for the rear wheel and the chain. It's gonna be a fixie, since I've not seen many electric fixies before, and I wanna try it. But um, aren't we obviously still missing the front wheel? The only thing we're missing, obviously, is the front wheel. An electric front wheel. We will now include this in the frame, wire everything up, and see how that rides. I'm very stoked about this, as I know how cool this bike is without electric part, but with... It might just be this a little bit more cooler, even. So let's get to it. Damn, I wonder how that fits so perfectly. You may wonder, how does this fit so perfectly? Well, that is because Switch, they make this hub to your dimensions. So I asked them to make them in this specific dimensions for my front fork, and they did, and therefore it fits perfectly. Thank you, Switch. And I can hear you guys think, wait, this color doesn't fit in the bike, but I got something just for that. Just wait till the end. Let's first assemble every other component of the electric system on the bike. So here we got the battery pack and motor controller that goes on the front of the bike. Well, that is, normally it goes like this, but I think for my aesthetics, I want it like this. It's just a bit more slick looking and faster. I could also place it somewhere else on the bike, but I think because this is such a clean design, I want it in the front end, where it's not too messing up the colors. For that, Switch delivered this very nifty looking click connector, which goes on the front. Let's assemble this. How 
does the bike know when we are pedaling and when we are not? The switch included this handy little sensor which goes on here and they include this magnetic ring which goes onto the crank. Every time a magnet passes the sensor it detects that calculates what speed the bike should go. Very nifty. So let's first install this. It goes around like this. You can see how this will be centered. Switch provided this metal ring which will keep it to place. And this sensor has another of these wires which goes to a connector which is just literally plug and play. Here's the thing that interests me the most because there's a question right? This is a fixie therefore you cannot stop pedaling. You can slow down pedaling but the motor will still be powered. Does this work or is it literally a death machine? There's no brake on here. There is straps. So let's see how this goes. Well, this went south pretty quickly. Let me explain to you why and how I solved it. I should probably have been warned by the smug smile on my local bike expert's face when I showed him what I had done. In English? Yes. Do you want me to say something about this death trap of a bike? Um, yeah, if you're suicidal, um, but want to look fashionable while killing yourself, then this is a good solution. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Allow me to explain to you what actually happens if you ride this bike and why it is this dangerous. As you probably know, the point of a fixed gear bike is that your cranks are always fixed to your rear wheel. If your rear wheel rotates, your feet do too. It allows for very precise control of the bike. For the purists in the community, it is a challenge to use this mechanism to also brake. In that case, you would ride with foot retention and no brakes. Your brakes will have to be your legs. But with the addition of the electric motor in the front wheel and the sensor that turns on the motor when you are pedaling, it means that a positive feedback loop will happen in this system. And that is very dangerous, as it will not allow the user to stop, ever. Even without anyone on this bike, this bike will keep accelerating. Refson, can you please explain why? Yeah, of course. So, the wheel is attached to the pedal as said before. If the sensor detects the pedal is moving, it will accelerate the motor, therefore the bike will go faster, and therefore since the wheel is attached to the pedals, the pedals will go faster, therefore the sensor detects that it's going faster, therefore the motor goes faster, pedals go faster, motor goes faster, pedals go faster, motors go faster, pedals go faster, therefore... And as you can see, I took it off, because it was too dangerous. And I added something special. How about this? Better. But not legal in all countries. But we don't talk about that. Alright guys, it's time for the finishing touch, which will make this bike look so much better. And it will be these. You've probably seen these in the last video. They created the disc wheel in the front. And these are used in bike polo. But this time we'll make them a little bit differently. We will make them out of... Aluminium or aluminum for my American viewers. You can imagine we want to create a cone like shape, right? But without the top, so it's called a truncated cone. And in order to understand which pattern we need to make this truncated cone in its flat version, we'll use this very handy website which shows exactly how to do that. We fill in three parameters here and it gives us a pattern for the base. Let's get this onto the aluminium and cut it. And so I began chopping up some aluminium sheets. After attaching this to the wheel and gluing the edges to place, I started wondering what it would look like if I would not make two other thirds of this disc and leave it like this. Might make for a mighty red look. Also, might unbalance the bike dramatically. Of course, we needed to put some branding on this wheel. And now, it's ready. Let's go.
This became an absolute ridiculous bike. It rides like an absolute tank. It was heavy on itself, but with the addition of the battery pack and the motor, this thing became absolutely chunky. I really like the aesthetics of the front wheel. Reminds me of the 2009 Formula 1 cars, but it is not really well balanced. So this will soon become a full disc wheel again. Thank you Switch for this amazing opportunity and I hope I can show you guys that with such a kit you can build something amazing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.